The crypto bull run is starting and it is going to mint new millionaires. And with so many different narratives and themes exploding like AI and DeFi, it can be hard to figure out which coins are going to do well in this crypto bull run. We've all heard of Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I'm going to talk about five of my favorite altcoins that I think will have a massive opportunity, how they play into these different themes and narratives. And I'm also going to share bonus altcoin gems for people who are really looking to get risk on and truly looking for that next 100x. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back, where we're always sharing the latest crypto alpha. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It truly helps the channel. Check the links below and come drop me a follow on Twitter where I'm always sharing my latest research like this one here on Eigenlayer and the liquid restaking ecosystem. But let's get in to today's video of the top five altcoins for 2024. The first altcoin we're going to look at is Pendle Finance, and Pendle Finance at its core is a yield trading marketplace. I've been talking about Pendle on this channel for over a year, and in 2023, it was one of the best performing altcoins, up over 5,000%. Pendle remains one of my largest altcoin positions, and I agreed to collaborate with them to show you some of the latest partnerships and different product offerings that they've been building, and why I truly believe they will continue to be a top performer in 2024. Pendle Finance has two main products, Pendle Earn and Pendle Trade. And right now we're taking a look at the Pendle Earn dashboard, which allows you to earn fixed yield on different blue chip assets. You can see there's quite a few blue chips like Lido Staked to Eat at 4.4% APY or Staked Frax at 4.9%. There's even the Dai Stablecoin where you can earn a safe 5.6%. Pendle has always done a great job bringing new product offering with trusted teams and with their partnerships with both EtherFi and KelpDAO, which are both Ethereum liquid restaking protocols, we can earn 30% on Ethereum. And if we go ahead and check out EtherFi, which is the same team that bought to you Stator Labs, you can see that we're being offered here 30% fixed APY for 149 days, and this will mature on the 26th of June. So if we were to deposit, for example, 10 ETH, then on that maturity day, 149 days from now, we'll actually receive 11.15 ETH at maturity. If we go ahead and click this tab up top that says earn, we can go ahead and enter the trade product offering. And on the trade tab, you can create strategies to take advantage of different DeFi yields by longing against them if you think they'll go up in the future, or even hedging against them by locking in a rate now if you think they'll go down in the future. If you're asking where the yield comes from, Pendle is able to take a yield bearing asset and split it into two components, the YT, which is, represents the yield token, as well as the PT, the principal token. Typically in DeFi, you're paid a yield for agreeing to stake your token with their product. For this example, if we were to take a 100 DAI staked in compound, typically after three months, we would get back our principal of 100 DAI, as well as any yield we might have earned, which could be in compound tokens. But what Pendle has done is now taken that same token and split it into two different workflows. And now different users can take advantage by buying either just the principal tokens or just the yield tokens by taking claim to that yield. And after the three months, you can see we end up with a similar result. People are really enjoying earning either fixed yield on their blue chip assets or creating these different yield trading strategies because today they have over $500 million locked within their product. In the traditional finance world, these institutions trade trillions of dollars of these assets. And so what's exciting to see is Pendle is working with these same institutions to bring them on chain, like Abra Global, who manages over $500 million in assets under management. They've also partnered with Coba Global, which again is trusted by over 500 institutions, billions of dollars in assets under management, and is helping manage their different yield strategies. One of the other things that Pendo is doing well is by partnering and creating new product offerings for protocols built on top of Eigenlayer. If you aren't familiar with Eigenlayer, it is set to be one of the most massive narratives in 2024. And it's this idea of taking staked Ethereum, which typically helps secure the Ethereum blockchain, but going ahead and restaking it. And by doing this, Ethereum can loan out its security to other protocols in exchange for fees and rewards. An eigenlayer is setting up to have one of the biggest airdrops in 2024, and typically what you would do is you would stake your Ethereum and you earn restake points, which would translate to your airdrop. 
Well, with these partnerships with Pendle, you can actually help earn double the points to qualify for even larger airdrops. The first partnership is with KelpDAO, which is going to allow you to earn Kelp miles for every ETH you stake, as well as pass on any Eigenlayer rewards to you. They've also went ahead and partnered with Etherfi, and like Pendle intern highlights, this could easily be worth a five-digit airdrop. And by going ahead and staking your ETH with EtherFi, you're going to again earn dual rewards. And the last thing that you should be taking advantage of is Pendle has also been granted 2 million Arbitrum tokens from the foundation. This is millions of dollars that they're giving back to users of the platform. And you can see here, there's about $1.1 million Arbitrum tokens left up for grabs. Just summarize everything. You can see here that Pendle has so many things going on. And be sure to give my friend here a follow, explain like I'm 5 DeFi who creates these awesome graphics. But Pendle is doing everything with real world assets, yield boosters, liquid restaking, liquid staking, right? DeFi, and look at all these partnerships that they have. And they are definitely set up to be successful in 2024. Pendle right now trades at around a $200 million market cap. But with all of their partnerships with different bringing institutions on chain, liquid staking in DeFi, real world assets, I'm definitely betting that Pendle will become easily a multi-billion dollar protocol in the bull run. I promised you all I would also mention bonus altcoins that I thought had the potential to do 50 to 100 esque, but remember, these are going to be even more risky. And so I compiled a research of the entire liquid restaking ecosystem, as I imagine this is going to be huge in 2024. And over 12 projects are listed here, many of them do not have a token yet but I do want to talk about one that does. This is going to be Restake Finance, a modular liquid restaking protocol, and they just completed their audit with Open Zeppelin, which is a top auditor in the crypto space. And they're looking to go live with Mainnet, I believe on February 5th. They do have a token that's already launched that's sitting around 37 mil, and I believe, just on speculation, that they're actually going to announce a partnership with Pendle because we saw Pendle quote tweet them mentioning liquid restaking the same as they did for EtherFi before they announced their partnership. I'm extremely bullish restake. I hold it in my own portfolio and I'm also looking forward to this project, Euclid Finance, which is set to launch, I believe, in a few weeks and it doesn't yet have a token. And so be sure to pay attention to these projects. The second altcoin is going to be Celestia, and this is going to be the first ever modular blockchain and is really pushing the bounds of innovation here in the crypto space. Typically, blockchains are built as monolithic, meaning they have one technology stack. But that means sometimes that they're really limited in terms of use cases that they can go ahead and adopt. So what Celestia does is take that idea and make it more modular, meaning separating it out and you can almost kind of build your own Lego set of the best pieces of technology to go ahead and create a blockchain that's best for your business needs. And Celestia was built on the Cosmos ecosystem, which is great because that means it's able to connect to so many different blockchains already through Cosmos's IBC technology. Celestia has raised over $55 million to build this modular blockchain from Jump Capital, Polychain, Spartan Group, right? And just so many top tier investors are in on this project. Celestia went live with this mainnet just this past October, so it's only been live less than a few months, and it's already been adopted by so many different projects. And Celestia has a massive ecosystem being built around it. For example, BearChain, probably one of the most highly anticipated launches in 2024. Dimension, which is getting ready its mainnet right now. Neutron, which I've talked about as one of my favorite Cosmos altcoins. We also have things like Eclipse and Hyperlane that you might be interested in. You also notice a ton of different blockchains like Manta, which just did its big airdrop, including a ton of different gaming projects right here. If you just go to Celestia's X profile and you just start to scroll, you're going to see almost a partnership announced almost every few days because there's just so many people that are integrating with Celestia because of the value that it's bringing. And so I've even brought a few more here just recently posted. For example, Lyra, who's doing option protocols. We also have Subquery even Plume Networks, who's focusing on RWAs as well as Aveo. And so you can just see that there's so many projects that are excited and I've been waiting for this for quite a long time and are just immediately jumping up with the opportunity to get involved. And if we look at Celestia, we can see it launched at around $2.40 and it's almost done a full 10X in the past few months, trading around $17, which brings it to about a $2.8 billion market cap. I'm confident that Celestia will continue to outperform in 2024 and I could easily see this becoming a $20 billion project.
If you're looking for some beta exposure or for something more risk on and a lower market cap to the modular thesis, I would encourage you to look at Manta Network, whose token just went live last week. Manta is a ZK Ethereum layer two that's integrated, you can see here, with Celestia, Polygon, Optimism, and Polkadot. And by integrating with Celestia, they've already saved millions of dollars on gas, which they've highlighted here and how they're using Celestia for their data availability layer. Manta launched at about $2.16 just a few days ago, and it's already up to about $3.72. So it's making it about a $1 billion market cap already. Next, we're going to talk about Solana because Solana will be the Ethereum of this cycle. And the thesis is simple. If you believe Ethereum is going to go up, Solana is going to go up more. Solana is known to being the fastest blockchain out there at over 65,000 transactions per second. When you compare this to something like Ethereum, it's just 15 transactions per second. A lot of things clouded Solana during the bear market, particularly being associated with Sam FTX, who was one of the biggest bulls on Solana, as well as people often believe that Solana was centralized and the network just didn't function as it was crashing all the time. You can see now there's over 2,900 Solana nodes and a Nakamoto coefficient of 21. This is a way that you can measure the decentralization of blockchains. We can also see that the Solana network has been incredibly stable. Even looking back at May, we can see that we have green bars across the board. Solana is still the fourth largest blockchain with 125 protocols, almost $1.5 billion in value locked. And you can see over the last seven days is seeing a massive net inflow. Most of the bear market, the TVL left Solana. You can see just a grim 200 million. But over the last few months, of course, TVL started to flood back and there's a ton of new users activity. We can even see in the last 24 hours alone that Solana flipped Ethereum and the amount of volume traded on the different decentralized exchanges. And that's because so many users are flooding back and are excited about all the new projects that are launching that, of course, everyone's been trading like a frenzy. What's incredible is that Solana is also forging strong partnerships with institutions outside of crypto with their partnership with Visa, who cited that due to their high transaction throughput, scalability, and low cost, it makes it a good candidate for the payment network and the Visa stablecoin settlement pilot. Solana has also done really cool things like launching Solana Mobile. This is an actual phone that developers can use to help bring more people into the Solana ecosystem. And I know some people don't really care about meme coins, but when you have Bloomberg posting articles about how a meme coin called Dog With Hat on the front page is definitely going to bring a lot of attention to the Solana ecosystem and is honestly some of the best free marketing. Absolutely insane. Dog with Hat, the meme coin, is trading at over $300 million right now. And this is on the tails after Bonk had done over a billion dollars. You can see here it's dipped quite a bit and now it's trading still at $700 million. And they are just seeing a mad meme coin frenzy these days in the Solana ecosystem, if that's something you're looking for. We also have venture capital firm Van Eck who is anticipating that a base case of Solana, right, the lowest that they believe it could possibly be, they're going to see a Solana 335 by 2030, but their bull case could be over $3,000 a Solana, which obviously would represent a massive upside from here. Solana was trading at about $8 in the bear market and now about $97, bringing it around a $42 billion market cap. So while this project is not small, I think it has incredible potential to go past all-time highs. And if we believe that Solana is going to crush all-time highs and be a top performer, then we can expect that there will be a few ecosystem projects that will do explosively more in terms of returns and gains. And so one project I've been looking at is Jito, which is a liquid staking protocol similar to that of Lido. And right now it trades at about a $238 million market cap. Another project to consider is something like Pyth, and this is really going to be something similar to Chainlink, and we really have not seen a good Chainlink competitor out there, and so that's what makes this so interesting. And this trades at around right, 578 million. But if you compare this to Chainlink's valuation, this has a ton of upside. Another project I'd pay attention to in the Solano ecosystem is Helium. It trades at around $7.96 or about a $1 billion market cap. And this is a deep in play, a decentralized, physical infrastructure network.
The next coin we're going to talk about is Arbitron, which is the leading layer two helping scale the Ethereum blockchain. The Arbitron blockchain is home to some of the largest protocols in all of DeFi and crypto with over $2.6 billion locked into its ecosystem and over 530 projects that deployed. One of the biggest catalysts for Arbitrum and really Ethereum layer twos is this idea of EIP 4844 proto dink sharding. EIP 4844 will make Arbitrum transactions 50 to 100x cheaper than they already are. It will also bring a ton more revenue to the Arbitrum sequencer. We can also see that Tim here from the Ethereum Foundation said that EIP 4844 is going to go live on testnet January 30th and February 7th. And if that all goes well, then they'll pick a day to do mainnet on Ethereum. And then, of course, protocols like Arbitrum will benefit greatly. With all the protocols building on Arbitrum, the Arbitrum Foundation actually created a grant program to support those teams and builders that are looking to bring value to the ecosystem. The vote passed granting each of these projects millions of dollars of Arbitrum incentives, and many of them are giving them out to their user bases. So be sure to get involved in the Arbitrum ecosystem as it's a great way to get access to these liquidity mining incentives. And if we just scroll down the list here, we can see all the projects that were granted it. Projects like Camelot, which is the native DEX, got over 3 million tokens. GMX had the largest allocation at 12 million Arbitrum tokens. We also had projects like Lodestar and Pendle and Radiant, right? So you can see there's a ton of different projects that were granted tokens. Another exciting thing is that Arbitrum actually proposed a stake for ARB staking, meaning you can go ahead and stake your existing Arbitrum tokens to earn more. With this idea that people would be able to lock up their Arbitrum tokens for as long as maybe one year, you can see they'd get a return anywhere between 10 to even 100%. And this really just depends on, of course, how many people would participate in that program. But with Arbitrum staking, you're removing tokens from circulation, reducing selling pressure, and ideally should drive the price action higher. We also talked about Arbitrum Orbit when we were talking about Celestia, which is using Celestia for data availability, but Arbitrum Orbit allows anyone to go ahead and launch their own chains to set settle on Ethereum. Arbitrum Orbits are so powerful because it's a completely customizable blockchain to anything you want while taking advantage of Ethereum's properties, right? So anything custom privacy, even custom token that you use for gas, governance, permissions, and more. And this makes it perfect for gaming, and that's why we saw Zai Games launch an Arbitrum Orbit, which is a gaming studio. Arbitrum went ahead and hit all-time highs actually earlier this month, so it's a bit on the dip right now. It's trading about $1.82 or about $2.3 billion market cap, but its token ranking is 41. And even though Arbitrum has just hit all-time highs, I think it's insane to see it all the way down here on the list. I expect it to be a top 15, 20 coin at minimum. There's no reason it shouldn't be flipping coins like Monero or Stellar Lumens or Litecoin, right? So I think there's a ton of room of growth here. And if we suspect the Arbitrum ecosystem to continue to be the leading Ethereum layer two scaling solution, we should definitely take a look at all the different protocols that of course are launching on Arbitrum. And could I imagine that some of these will do quite well, particularly GMX. There's other projects like Camelot and Zai Games that I talked about. GMX is one of the most interesting protocols for me. I've talked about on this channel for at least one to two years. It's in around a 400 million market cap and it completely dominates the decentralized perpetual exchange space. The last project, number five altcoin we're going to talk about is Avalanche. And that's because Avalanche is doing so much when it comes to institutional adoption in gaming that I think it has the potential to be one of the top layer ones in 2024. What makes Avalanche so attractive to gaming and institutions is it actually has this unique architecture where it's three different blockchains. There's the Avalanche C chain, which is the typical EVM, and this is what most people interact on when they think of the Avalanche ecosystem. There's also the P chain, and this is what helps create subnets. Subnets are your custom blockchains where you can implement any rules that you would like. For example, if you want it to be permissioned versus permissionless, if you want to implement KYC because you're an institution, you can have your own custom gas token if you're a gaming platform. And there's just a ton of flexibility here. There's also the X chain. You can see here, this is where the consensus protocol allows you to create and exchange assets. 
With all this, they created Avalanche Evergreen subnets, which were really meant to go after institutions, traditional finance, and enterprise blockchains. And that's because you're going to have so much customization, for example, KYC, which is really important in the traditional finance world. Now, remember, these are enterprise blockchains. These are going to be separate dedicated private blockchains for these companies. So it wouldn't be something that you or I would interact with anyways. So things like KYC is not going to matter to us. And they're really going after these institution players that they even launched this Avalanche Vista Fund, a $50 million fund to help pioneer tokenization of these assets. This is paying off massive because Avalanche was able to partner with JP Morgan for their Onyx project under Project Guardian. We can see here that Onyx manages over $950 billion in tokenized treasury, and they've been able to already process $1 to $2 billion through this partnership. They've also been able to land a partnership with Citigroup, one of the largest banking institutions in the world. You can see where they tested the use of blockchain infrastructure to execute simulated FX trade on their Evergreen subnets. And the same customization and value that is being given to institution actually carries over to gaming as well because gaming blockchains have very specific needs and we can see there is a ton of games building on this ecosystem. And as we scroll down here, we can see that there's been some really cool fun games being built here and some of them raising millions of dollars to go ahead and bring us some fun and exciting gameplay that I expect will be released soon in the 2024 bull run that we can all enjoy. And some people think the Avalanche team is insane by launching this program, but they've actually launched an Avalanche foundation for community coins. And really what this means is that they're willing to support even meme coin projects because again, there's no better marketing than a meme coin. Now there's quite a bit of criteria here, so don't just go launch a meme coin assuming the Avalanche team is gonna buy your bags, right? There's quite a different things that have to be considered, but it's great to see them actually wanting to support community run projects here. And if you're looking for some Avalanche meme coins, the top one right now is definitely cock in you, which is trading at about $82 million. Beam is trading at about a $933 million market cap, and it could be a great opportunity to get more exposure to the Avalanche ecosystem with potentially more upside. Those are my top five altcoins for 2024, as well as I mentioned quite a few different altcoin gems that could have significantly more gains in price action. But do me a favor, Drop a comment below of your top five altcoins for 2024 so that I always have more things to research. Check the links below. Come join completely free community discord. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.